Hey guys, what is going on? Today I have another EOS video for you guys and today we're gonna look at how you can create your own EOS token based on the EOS currency example contract and then also how we can push that contract to our local testnet and interact with it, meaning send funds back and forth to our accounts. I hope you'll enjoy the video, let's get into the code. We are starting this off in the EOS GitHub which is where I started my previous EOS videos. But what you need to do in order to follow along with this tutorial is to clone this repository and then follow along to set up your local development environment for whatever platform you have. And this tutorial is quite uh, good that they have here in their GitHub. So I was able to follow along without any problems. And it seems like the branch that is most stable at the moment is the Dawn 2x branch. This is the one that I'm using. And in their wiki here, they have some more tutorials of how you can set up your, um, your wallet. So here, under tutorials, they have accounts and wallets, because you will need both an account and a wallet to follow along this tutorial and to publish contracts and to interact with contracts. So you need to follow along this as well in order to get your wallet, to get your keys and so on. And I'll make a video about this in the future if you want. If you're having trouble uh, creating your wallet and creating your keys and creating your accounts, then I can show you that in a future video. But I assume that you managed to go through this successfully just like I did and that you've cloned the repository. Because once you've cloned the repository, we can check out this um, contracts folder. It's in the EOS repository and under contracts and you can see that they have provided a bunch of example contracts that we can use for inspiration or to use for these basic tasks. So we have the currency contract, we have an exchange contract for example, we have the skeleton contract that we used in the previous EOS videos where we created the most basic hello world contract. That's the skeleton contract. And today we're going to focus on the currency contract and see how the currency contract works, what's inside it, and how we can deploy and interact with it on a local testnet. So once you got this, open up the currency contract in your favorite editor. I'm using Sublime Text. And when we're here, we can see that we have three files that are of importance. We have the currency.cpp file, which is our source code, basically. And we have the currency.hpp file, which is our header file. And this defines certain functions and certain structures that can be used in our source files that can be used in multiple source files afterwards. And we also have the currency.abi file here. And the ABI is short for application binary interface. And it's an interface where people can see in a very easy way how your, con how your contract is structured and how they can interact with it. Because once the contract is compiled and published to the blockchain, it will just be binary codes. It will be very difficult to see what's actually in it. But the most important stuff is in the CPP file. And this is what we're going to go through today. And then here we have, I think, four functions. Uh, and these together will define a token. And we have the init function, which will be executed once the, once the contract is created. And then we have the apply function which will implement these dispatches that we talked to in the uh, previous video, where when messages get sent to this contract, this is where we handle them. And then we also have the store account function, which will store accounts, as it says. And also if accounts is empty, it will remove them. And we also have the apply currency transfer. And this is basically where the actual transfer happens when there is a transfer message sent to this contract. So we can start to describe the what happens in here in the init function. Because this is the function that will initialize the contract. So this will only get run once. So we'll check if the account that published this, the own account, actually exists. And if it doesn't exist, we'll store a new currency account with this huge balance to begin with. And that's pretty much it. That all that happens. We create a new account if it doesn't exist. And if, and in here in the apply function, we basically just have one action. Well, first of all, we check so that this message was actually intended for the currency contract. And then we need to check if the action is a transfer action. 
and if it is a transfer action we will execute this function the apply currency transfer we will do this function up here and we will send the transfer message to it and this contract may look difficult but it's actually quite simple first of all we have some error handling here where we will require that the that the two accounts that are involved in this transfer are the two first ones to be notified and we'll also check so that the sender actually has the authentication to send these funds and after that we'll get the accounts from our account table so we'll have the from and the two accounts and then we'll decrease the balance of the from account we'll increase the balance of the two account and then we will store these new values in the table and now go ahead and publish this contract to the blockchain and then try to send some funds. So first of all, we're going to need to go into the currency contract folder. And uh, in here we have our files. And I've already compiled this in the past. I already have the currency WebAssembly file. But we can compile it anyway together. And we do that with the EOS CPP tool. And we write dash o and then the output file currency.webassembly and then our source code currency.cpp and that should of course compile without error and after that we can go ahead and use our eos c tool in order to publish this contract but make sure that you have your eos daemon up and running beforehand and then the uh, command for publishing contract is set contract and then we need the account that we want to publish it to and that is our currency account that if you followed along the eos github tutorial you will also have a currency contract oh sorry a currency account and then we also need to uh, specify the webassembly file and the abi file after that we can go ahead and set the contract and now the contract is published and now we can for example check the balances of the accounts in this contract and we do this by using the EOC tool once again and this time we use the command get table and then the name of the account I want to check the balance with and we can start off with the currency account that we used in order to publish the contract because that is supposed to get all of this initial balance so we use the currency account to check the balance with and we also need to specify where the contract is at and it is of course also at the currency account and then we need to specify the name of the table and the name of the table is account and now we can see that it has a balance of uh, what is it 1 billion is it I think it's 1 billion um, and we can also check my own account so we do again EOC get table my account is called Philip and check currency account and as you can see, I have no balance, nothing at all. And maybe I want some of this balance, right? Maybe I want some at my account. So I'm gonna send a transfer message to uh, this account and transfer some from the currency account to my account. And this is done by EOS C push message. And there's a lot of data here, so I've prepared this command here. But what we basically do is we write push, push message and then to which contract to which account and that's the currency account and we want to send it a transfer action and then we want to send the actual data and in this case we need to specify to which account from which account and then how much and in here of course I don't have anything so it can't be uh, from me so it needs to be from sorry to me Philip and it needs to be from the currency account and then we want to transfer let's say 1000 tokens and this is the scope of currency and Philip both of the accounts and since I'm sending from the currency account I need the permission from the currency account and this of course works because I have the private key to the currency account otherwise it wouldn't work So let's see that worked fine and now we're going to check the table again because now I've transferred funds to my account called Philip. So we're going to use ELC get table Philip and we can now see that I have a balance of 10 in this account table. 
So this is the most basic token that we've created here. We've checked out the code and we've published it to our local blockchain and we can interact with the contract, send money back and forth. And we can of course make modifications to this contract and create our own currency on top of the EOS blockchain. But this was a basic first understanding of how an EOS token can be created. All right guys, that was it. Now I hope you've learned how you can create your own EOS token and how you can publish that contract to the EOS testnet and then how you can send funds back and forth to your different accounts. I want to thank you very much for watching and please leave a comment if you have any suggestions for future videos. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this content and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.